Hello, Assalamualaikum. Welcome to Environmental Science 2. I am Madam Farhana and in this video, we will learn about sound properties. We will start with introduction to sound. What is sound? We hear sound every day. When we pour a cup of coffee, when bell rings, when cat meow, play musical instruments, and etc. But what actually produces these sounds? Sound is vibration. This is, this is the definition of sound. Okay, Sound is vibrations or pressure changes in an elastic medium which are capable of being detected by ears. So I repeat again, sound is vibration or pressure changes in an elastic medium which are capable of being detected by ears. Now, what does it mean by vibration? Okay, try to put your hand, your hand on your throat and speak. You can feel the vibration there. Okay, all sounds are produced by, by vibration. I will play this video to help you to understand what it meant by sound is vibration. What is vibration? It is to and fro or back and forth motion of an object. For example, if we stretch this rubber band with one hand and pluck it in the middle, it starts to move back and forth. In short, it starts to vibrate. It is this vibration that produces the sound. Yes, anything that vibrates will produce sound. Okay, so that is vibration. Now, what does it mean by being detected by ears? So this is how we hear sound. We have the outer ear that will collect and channel sound to the middle ear. Where it will then be transferred to eardrum. So the inner part of the ear will, tr will transform the wave into nerve impulse that can be transmitted to brain. Human can only detect sound in certain frequency that is from 20 to 20,000 Hz. Some animals like elephants and moles can hear until infrasound and some frequency under human auditory field. And there's also another group of animals like cats, dogs, bats and dolphins that can hear the higher frequency in human auditory field and ultrasound. Next, what is elastic medium? You already learned in your school that sound needs medium to travel. So it can travel by solid, liquid and gases. Generally, sound travels through all medium except in vacuum space because there is no medium. But there are some medium that has high elasticity like metal and some has lower elasticity like clay. So elastic medium has particles that will return to their original position after vibration. Okay, now that we have understand what is sound, let's understand more on sound waves. We will start by watching this video on sound waves. Waves are produced as a result of vibrations and can be classified as transverse or longitudinal. Whether they are transverse or longitudinal depends upon how the particles are made to vibrate as the energy passes. Let's look at longitudinal first. This is where the particles vibrate parallel to the direction in which the wave of energy is travelling. Notice that the ends of the slinky don't ever leave the hands holding them. It's only the energy that travels. The places where the coils or particles are bunched together are called compressions. Where they are furthest apart are called rarefactions. An example of longitudinal waves is sound. When a drum is struck, the drum skin vibrates, which causes the air particles next to it to vibrate. This causes the next air particle to vibrate, then the next, and so on until the vibration reaches the ear, causing the eardrum to vibrate. The vibrating air speeds away from the source, creating a sound wave.
I'll explain more on this. So this is air at equilibrium, mean there's no vibration that creates a sound wave. But when there's sound wave, means there's energy that will be transferred through the air. Here will be compression, compress, okay, compression. Here is refraction. So the sound can also be represented in graph. At compression, here, the amplitude is higher. So this is amplitude. The amplitude is higher and at refraction, it's lower. So from here to here, from the peak of the amplitude is called wavelength. This is one complete cycle. We are familiar with this term, frequency. Okay, but what is frequency? Frequency is vibrations per second. For example, when an object produces sound waves and the sound waves vibrate 100 times in one second, the sound frequency will be 100 hertz. Okay, let's see another example. So, 440 hertz means there are Okay, this is one cycle. So there are 440 cycles in one second. So what are the difference between difference hertz? So there's three examples. Now let's go to this website to experience the sound. So remember the number 250. Okay, let's try 250. I'm going to click play. You might want to lower down the volume first. So that is 250 hertz. Now I'm going to change to 350 hertz. And next is 450 hertz. Okay, so you can hear the difference, right, between these three um, frequency. Now, based on what we hear just now, lower frequency means lower pitch and less cycle per second. And higher frequency means higher pitch, which is also more cycle per second. So just now, it's understanding on the frequency, on how many cycle per second. And you already listened to the differences of this sound so but what are the difference between higher amplitude and lower amplitude so higher amplitude means louder and lower amplitude means quieter you might be familiar with this graphic here that usually represents sound so this one is actually sound wave the longer line here okay this one shows louder sound and the shorter line is quieter sound. Now let's understand about speed of sound. Let's watch this video of a thunder. You might be familiar with this experience. Now I'm going to play. Okay. So I'm going to play again. Pay attention to the light and the sound of thunder. So there's light and the thunder comes later. Now the speed of light is 300,000 km per second. But the speed of sound at 20 degrees Celsius air is 340 meter per second. So this one actually means it's 300 million meter per second. Now you can compare these two. So remember that just now when we were understanding the meaning of sound, we have learned that there's higher elasticity and there's lower elasticity medium. Since rubber has uh, rubber have the lowest elasticity among this material here. So the sound travel slower. Okay, that's why just now when we explain about this, the sound, this is the sound travel at air at 20 degrees Celsius. It's different for 
different Celsius. See, at 40, it's a little bit faster than at 20 degrees Celsius. So since uh, another one, try to compare. Okay, this is rubber, 60 meter, 60 meter per second, compared to concrete or aluminium, that is 5,000 to 6,000 meter per second. Now let's calculate wavelength. Let's say the speed of sound is equal to 340 meter per second, and then the frequency is 100. So if the speed of sound is equal to wavelength times frequency, so what is the wavelength? Now let's insert the given speed of sound here over frequency. So it's 340 meter per second per 100 hertz. So the wavelength from here to here is 3.4 meter. Now let's do this exercise. If the speed of sound is 355 meter per second and the frequency is 20,000 hertz, what is the wavelength? So pause this video and complete this exercise first. To help you understand better, make sure you have completed this exercise before continue with this video. So click pause if you haven't completed the exercise. Now let's see the answer. So based on this formula, okay, on, uh, change, bring the frequency down here. So its wavelength is equal to speed of sound over frequency. So it's 355 meter per second divided to divided by 20,000 hertz. It's equal to uh, 0 0.01775 meter or 17.75 millimeter. So just now is um, 20,000 hertz. Okay, it's equal to 17.75 mm. So this one with the same speed of sound but different hertz uh, sorry different frequency which is 20 hertz now what is the wavelength okay you can try to calculate but i already put here the answer so 355 meter per second divided by 20 hertz is equal to 17.75 meter so why did i show you the two questions now these two numbers here are the extreme wavelength for audible sound at sound speed equal to 355 meter per second or when air is at 20 degrees Celsius. So remember in our previous slide, okay, remember in our previous slide, human can only hear sound from 20 hertz to 20,000 hertz. So for 20 hertz, <clears throat> for 20 hertz, the wavelength is 17. Point 75 meter that is as wide as your studio okay 17 meter and for 20,000 hertz the wavelength is just a zero uh, just now is 1.7 cm okay 17 mm right so 1.7 cm that is around the width of your thumb finger so the higher the frequency the shorter the wavelength is and the lower the frequency the longer the wavelength is. So after this, I will explain why we share about this. Okay. So next subtopic is we're going to learn about sound level. So how to measure sound level? How we actually measure sound? Okay. So we can measure sound at source. We're going uh, for this one. We measure energy produced by source over time. The unit is watts. So usually this is for noise rating of machines. Next is sound intensity. So sound intensity is the energy, the sound energy that go through an area over time. This is the one area over time. Okay. It it is the unit is a watts per area. 
Okay, what will be the square? So this is usually for location and rating of noise source rate of energy flow. Or this is for per area. Now this is what we usually use. Okay, sound pressure. So it um it measure the pressure at a specific point. Okay, the unit is Pascal. So usually this one is for evaluation of harmfulness and annoyance of noise source. So that's why I put uh, this graphic here. Usually we measure this at one point as if like we are measuring on how we listen at our ear. So this image shows the difference between sound intensity and sound pressure. Okay, so sound intensity just now is measured based on how much energy go through an area. So let's say this is the area at one specific time. But sound pressure is measured at one specific point. So the sound meter that you use for sound analysis is to measure sound pressure. So when leaf when leaves rustles, we can hear soft sounds. So that is 0 0.000632 Pascal. And the sound that we can hear from loud jet engine when uh, it's located nearby is 630 Pascal. So notice the very big difference between these two numbers. So because of that reason, instead of using Pascal to measure, we use sound pressure level. So let's see the connection between sound pressure and sound pressure level. So our hearing threshold in Pascal unit is 0 0.00002 Pascal. Okay, and the threshold of pain is 63.2 Pascal. Now because of the huge difference and because it also includes sound waves that cannot be detected by human ear, we convert the numbers into decibel. So the decibel, okay, DBA, because decibel can be for sound pressure, can be for sound intensity, for sound pressure is DBA. Okay, so what happened is we start with zero, where we start to listen, okay? Zero is um, the hearing threshold and the number, the highest number in the, uh, okay, basically the threshold of pain is 130. So for these two numbers, the difference is not too big and it is more measurable. Let's compare the sound level from different sources. Zero is when we start to hear things, then 20 is uh, for quiet room like recording studio then around 50 is the sound in a quiet conference room or rural area during night time 70 decibel is normal speech from one meter away or airplane sound taking off at uh, two miles is around 3.2 kilometer away so the 90 decibel is sound is where the sound start to be considered as too loud and can harm our ears. So rock band is 110 decibel, but you have to understand that this is considering that you are standing very near to the sound source. That is not stated here. Okay, let's have a look at another table. So the green colors here means it's safe to our ears, and the red one means it's very risky to be heard. OSHA, okay, Malaysia Regulations OSHA, uh, stated that the noise, all noises above 82 decibel is excessive noise. Then if you, if you are exposed to 90 decibel, for more than 8 hours, it will um, bring risk to your ears. So you can see here, for jet engine, if it's very near, it will, immediate, it will give immediate risk to hearing. So that is the end of introduction to sound. Next video will be on sound behavior.